Hello. Today I'm going to talk about the steps I took to get an analog output from an FPGA board. The steps are first to pull together information on the digital to analog converter and the FPGA board that I'm using. And then the second step was to think about the information I got and to write Verilog code based on it. And then the third step was troubleshooting and debugging and testing. In today's video, I'm going to go through the first two steps in some depth. I hope you find it interesting. So pulling together the information that we're going to need, let's start with the DAC side. So I'm using um, a Digilent uh, DAC board, the PMOD DA3. And um, on the website of Digilent, um, they inform us that we're using an analog devices AD5541A. And they provide a link to Analog Devices website, and Analog Devices provides this PDF file, which is the data sheet for the device we're using. Um, now, it turns out that the pin connections that Digilent uh, provides uh, are named um, in a way that matches up with the data sheet. So it turns out that the Digilent board basically is just a carrier for the analog devices uh, uh, chip. And uh, so pretty much goes straight to the analog devices chip for information. Um, so at this point, what you have to do is uh, look really carefully at what analog devices says. Um, what are the inputs and outputs? And um, then you're going to need to go down and uh, kind of slog through a lot of details. But eventually you're going to get to here. This is what's really interesting. Let's zoom out here and uh, take a look. So this is the timing diagram. And, and it basically uh, tells you what needs to be happening on the different pins. So, uh, so for example, um, on the PMOD DA3 board, there's uh, a, a connection called S clock. All right. So S clock is this one here. Um, this is going to be the 25 megahertz clock uh, coming from the FPGA if we're using the uh, Nanland Go board. Now, if you're using a different board, a different FPGA, this could be a different frequency, but it turns out if you read the spec sheet, it can't be a frequency higher than, um, than 50 megahertz. Um, okay, the next thing that you find out, chip select, All right? Oh. That matches up here. Okay, so um, what this is saying is that when the logic level goes low, the chip is selected. And when the chip is selected, it is paying attention to what the clock is doing and to what the data in is coming in. Ah, data in. All right, well, that's pin two on the PMOD DA3. And, uh, and so we find out, okay, you know, you got to look at the details, but um, what we're finding out is that uh, the data, inf the, you know, let's say you want uh, um, 1.5 volts, all right, well, that's going to be uh, 32,000 um, binary, give or take a few counts. And so we need to send the number 32,000 or whatever in, in binary. And, and so uh, this will be the least significant bit, that bit zero, bit one, bit two, and they, there are 16 bits, they didn't, they're not showing all of them. And then this is the most significant bit. And then there's a crucial piece of information here. Uh, this little line right here, uh, and then with a little reading, you find out that this, each of these data bits have to be settled. They have to be either definitely a one or definitely a zero on the rising edge 
of the clock. Um, moving on, uh, the uh, LDAC line, uh, which is here as well, um, if you read in the uh, spec sheet, you'll find out that um, LDAC means, uh, you kind of surmise that LDAC means load DAC. And when it goes low, the information that's been accumulated, you know, the 15 bits of data, that information is turned into an actual analog output voltage when this goes low. Now, in my Verilog code, I'm just going to keep it low all the time. And uh, from reading the data sheet, I know that the uh, change, the, the output will be adjusted based on the previously received bits um, uh, as soon as the last bit has been registered. So that's okay. But um, you could use LDAC to uh, specify exactly when you want the uh, analog output to change. Um, and you can imagine that there are situations where that would actually be a useful thing. For example, let's say you had a dozen DACs and you wanted them to all change at the same time. You, this would come in handy in a situation like that. So now that we've looked carefully at the analog devices data sheet, the next step is to take a look at the FPGA side of things. Here is the uh, analog devices uh, chip. This is the PMOD DA3 board. We now know what each of these wires is doing, but we need to know how we're going to talk to those wires. We need to know how the FPGA chip, which is here, is connected up to these wires over here. So the first step in figuring that out is to go to the maker of the board, the FPGA board, Nanland. And so there I'm, we're looking at the circuit diagram that we download from Nanland and go combing through this circuit diagram, um, we find the PMOD connector, which has, um, uh, so it's got two rows of pins. Here's one row of pins. Here's another row of pins. And those get connected to the FPGA. Oh, okay. Now, this symbol here means go look on another part of the schematic on another part of the diagram. All right, so let's go hunting for that connection. And uh, here is, this This is the FPGA, and this is where the, P, uh, here, this is where the FPGA gets connected to the PMOD. Now, the FPGA chip is big, and so um, it, for whatever reason, it gets broken up into four chunks. So, so this is part of the FPGA, this is part of the FPGA, there's another part over here, and there's another part over here. Um, okay, so uh, what we find out is that, let's zoom in here, let's look carefully. All right, what we find out is that PMOD connector pin 1 goes to the FPGA uh, uh, pin 65, and pin 2 goes to pin 64, and so on. Now actually, uh, as part of the process of making it easy to learn on the Go board, uh, uh, the creator of the Go board, Russell, um, it already provides us uh, uh, some information, uh, so um, we don't really have to dig in this detail. But I'm showing you this because if you're ever, if you're using another board, you will have to go to this level of detail. Let's take a look at what uh, Nanland has provided us. So now I'm looking at the IceCube 2 software uh, to point out that uh, down here, there's a very important file that needs to be included. It's called uh, go board constraints dot pcf and um, now in different environments like the Quartus environment for Altera, Intel, FPGAs it, it has a different name but um, 
no matter what environment you're going to be in, there's, there will be a, fo a, a file that does this. Now let's take a look at what's inside that file. So here I am in the uh, goboardconstraints.pcf file and what we see is uh, a long list of names which are going to be familiar to us. Right? We, um, if we went through the NANLAND tutorials, we're, we're going to recognize the name LED1. That's what we wired up to in Verilog to turn on the first LED. And the 56 right here, that tells us that it's going to pin 56 of the physical FPGA chip. And if I go down further, here are the UARTs, the VGA, and here are the PMOD signals. And lo and behold, uh, IO PMOD 1 right here connects to FPGA pin 65. So it's consistent with what we saw in the circuit diagram. When you make your own, uh, if you're, when you strike out going to, let's say, the Altera board or um, Xilinx uh, boards, um, you're going to need to construct a, a similar file, which will match up the, um, the, the functional thing you're doing with the physical pin on the FPGA. It turns out that in Altera, and I believe this is also the case in, with Xilinx, uh, there's a tool in the programming environment that helps you do that um, in, with a sort of graphical interface. We've looked at the data sheet for the DAC and the signals that it wants. We've looked at the schematic diagram for our FPGA board, and we've identified the I.O. lines that will be talking to the DAC board. So it's now time to do the Verilog side of things. Here is the top module of the Verilog code that you can download from my web page. So this one is called DAC Test Top. Um, and as we look at it, uh, the first part is the I.O. And um, right here uh, is the, uh, the I.O. lines that go to the PMOD ports. So we actually have two PMOD ports. Um, and uh, so these are for the first PMOD port. These are for the second PMOD port. The second PMOD port is what we're using. The first one um, the, is empty, and uh, we will be using uh, the empty um, pins um, as a place to hook up uh, oscilloscope probes. So we'll, we'll be putting those to good use. So let's take a look at uh, what else will we have here. OK, so this part here, uh, make sample clock. Um, that's there because our FPGA's clock is 25 megahertz, but the uh, DAC wants to uh, refresh at a maximum of 1 megahertz. So um, the sample clock puts out a 1 megahertz uh, signal, a, a, a pulse that's uh, 1 uh, 25 megahertz clock cycle wide, and, but it does that one million times per second. So that determines the sample rate of the, uh, of the DAC. This right here is going to be the place where the uh, data that will go to the DAC will sit. Um, it, we have a 16-bit DAC, and, and so that's where the data will be going through. This part here is an interface to one of the submodules. What this one does is make uh, the waveform. And uh, you can uh, use either uh, test waveform sawtooth or test waveform growing square wave. Uh, so just comment in or out uh, one of these. Now, uh, the, uh, this thing takes 
as inputs the, um, the FPGA's 25 megahertz clock. It takes as an input the one megahertz sample clock and it uh, puts out the, uh, the waveform, um, the 16-bit numbers that will define the voltages that come out of the DAC. And uh, one more thing, this is just for convenience, it also puts out a signal uh, to make it easy for the oscilloscope to trigger. We have coming out of uh, the make waveform module the, the data, and then that data needs to go in to another module, which is right here. Uh, it's called send to DAC, PMOD DA3. And uh, so this, this is a, a little more complicated thing. It, what it does is take the data, which is uh, 16 bits, right? Now this, this connection here would be 16 parallel wires. Um, and it converts it to uh, 16 bits coming over one wire. So it, it, we're going from a parallel data to serial data. Um, okay, and then we have some other lines here that are needed by the uh, by the Digilent uh, DAC PMOD DA3. They're needed by the analog devices DAC chip. So, uh, so this one here is the chip select line, which we were talking about when we looked at the data sheet. Um, this one here is uh, LDAC, so uh, load the, the DAC, make it put out the analog voltage. Um, and then this here, S clock, is the um, clock that tells when each bit, each bit of serial data that's right here, um, is valid, when it's stabilized. Okay. So now we will take a look at these submodules. Okay, right now we're looking at make test waveform sawtooth. So um, now uh, it takes as inputs the 25 megahertz clock. It takes as an input the one megahertz uh, sample clock, um, which defines the, the sample rate of the DAC. It take so as an output as an output it's putting out the 16 parallel wires the 16 parallel bits um, output waveform and it's also putting out the convenience signal for triggering the scope uh, all this thing does is uh, is count um, so um, so uh, every uh, sample clock every uh, so a million times per second it is uh, uh, incrementing um, this uh, counter, uh, this, this register. So the, this register starts out at zero, and then the next sample clock, it becomes one, and then the next sample clock, it becomes two, and so on. And eventually, it gets up to two to the 16 minus one, um, and then it rolls over and returns back to zero. So the output, if you, if you graph this, um, it starts at zero and then gradually, gradually, gradually it gets up to two to the 16 minus one and then it's back to zero. And, and so you get a sawtooth out. Now we're looking at the send to DAC module. We have a state machine with only two states here. Um, okay, before we get into that, let's look at the inputs and outputs. So coming in, we have the 25 megahertz clock. Coming in is a signal which is coming from the, uh, the module that uh, is making the waveform. This signal says that the, um, the number that's coming in here, the 16 bit parallel, 16 parallel bit number, uh, the, that the, that's a, a valid number now. So that's what this is for. And then the output. So the, out, the main output here is the serialized data, but you also have the clock that's going to go to 
the DAC uh, chip, you have the load DAC, LDAC line, and you have the chip select line. Okay. Um, so let's take a look at the state machine here. Uh, it has two states, one state here idle and the other one here send bits. Now uh, this uh, represents a, a circuit which um, is clocking at the 25 megahertz. So, 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 so we're, we're going to have either this stuff here happening if we're in the idle state or this stuff here happening if we're in the send bit state uh, happening at 25 uh, million times per second. So um, we start out in the idle state and if the data valid flag is true, right here, uh, uh, logical one, binary one, then this will happen. Um, otherwise, if it's not, then we're just going to stay in the idle state and we're back to where we were. But let's say that, yes, we have valid data. Well, the first thing that happens, uh, well, okay, I, I got to be careful. I said the first thing that happens, but that's not thinking about it right. All of these things happen simultaneously, right? This is one of the key conceptual points of, of Verilog. Um, so, so, but the most important thing, I think, um, is that bit 15, the most significant bit uh, that came in, goes into uh, this uh, serial data line, right? The um, serial data is, is the output. So right off the bat, we're going to send the most significant bit to the DAC chip. All right, now more things happen at the same time. Um, the remaining uh, 15 bits, uh, they get put into a register called output buffer. So the, the first bit went straight to the DAC and the other bits go to output buffer. And another thing that happens is that we are going to change states to the state, the state machine will go to the send bits state. All right, so the next clock cycle, we're not here anymore. Now in the next clock cycle, we're in send bits. Now uh, we're, we're tracking how many bits have been sent here and we haven't sent all 16 bits yet. Let's scroll up a little bit. Uh, so, so we're we're down here. Um, so, uh, what we do? Uh, see, again, these things are all going to happen simultaneously. Uh, so, maybe the most interesting part right now is that bit fourteen in output buffer will be sent to the serial data line to the to the DAC. But another thing that happens is that the remaining bits, so, so far we've sent the fit bit 15, we sent bit 14, there's still bits 13 down to zero. Those bits get shifted to the left by one. So that, that's what's happening here. And, and that puts the next bit in place for it to be sent to the DAC. Um, we increment how many bits we have we have sent. Um, we're going to remain in the send bits state. And now the, um, the clock, the, the 25 megahertz clock clicks again and this process repeats. Uh, the 14th bit gets sent to the DAC. The remaining bits get shifted. Uh, we increment bit count. We are still in this. So this happens and happens and happens until finally we've sent um, uh, all but the last bit. And so we're, we're up to 15 here. We now send the very last bit and we uh, go back to the idle state. And uh, also we inform the DAC that, um, that that's it. 
we don't have any more data to send. And um, so deactivate is maybe not exactly the right word. Actually, the DAC um, is no longer actively receiving bits, but as soon as this happens, as soon as this bit changes from one to zero, uh, zero to one, that's when the uh, voltage on the DAC output will change to whatever the new voltage should be, depending on what the number was that it received over the serial line. And, um, okay, one last detail, but it's pretty important. And that is this line right here. Uh, what it does is it inverts the clock signal. Um, you see, on the rising edge of our 25 megahertz clock, that's when stuff is happening. That's when the uh, values are changing. But the DAC wants to know when the values are not changing, when they're stable. So, um, so from, from the point of view of the 25 megahertz clock, that's on the falling edge. This tilt here changes the a falling edge, uh, it flips it over, turns it into a rising edge. So now we can tell the DAC that it's uh, what it wants to know. It wants to know we have a rising edge. Now the data is stable. I think that's it. Time to see whether it works. So yes, it's working and uh, I've rearranged things a little bit. Now the analog scope is showing the output of the DAC and um, I've uh, made it so that now the uh, digital scope is showing the chip select line and the data. So you can see that the uh, serial data is coming in when the chip is selected and, and remember that it's a low true so when chip select is low that's when the uh, analog devices DAC chip pays attention to what's happening on the data line and so you can see the the ones and zeros coming in and as soon as the last bit has been received the chip select line goes uh, up which in the inverted logic means false and that's when the next point uh, the next point uh, happens now uh, the sweep down here is is very slow it's a, a few milliseconds whereas the sweep up here is very fast you see each one of these is uh, 250 nanoseconds and each of these blips is uh, a, a, a microsecond apart so because this is an up this is an update, this is an update, and so the updates happen a million times per second. Okay, I, I know this was a long video, but I hope it was worthwhile. Um, thank you for watching.